what I'm wearing on bottom. Let's do some science. The big bristles are located on the outside of, there we go. Makeup ASMR. I, I mean, I don't know. You can be as crazy as you want. I really love this look. I think it's super beautiful. This is like just a classic Christmas look. Cheers. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Madison Kate. I am a professional makeup artist, spray tan artist, and YouTuber. Today is a very special day because today is Christmas. Well, technically it's Christmas Eve. I am filming today on Christmas Eve. I'm doing a get ready with me and I wanted to bring you guys on this journey to get ready for Christmas, which means this video is not gonna go up until after Christmas because I'm obviously going to be busy celebrating today. I'm not gonna be editing and uploading. So this will go up after the holiday, but happy holidays to you and whatever you and your loved ones celebrate. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy holidays, happy new year, whatever y'all celebrate celebrate. I hope it's a good one. And the way that I like to celebrate the holidays is with a bottle of champagne. So let's get this opened and let's get glamming. I am going to be opening this with a pair of tweezers because I am a beauty professional. I've never done this on camera before and usually I find someone else in the room and make them do it, but I am home alone. Oh my God, because it's Christmas. I've actually never seen Home Alone. No! <laughs> I mean, honestly, I should have expected that, right? If my husband were home, he would have told me not to do that, but he's not here so I can make my own mistakes. We need more. There we go. Before we get started with the glamming session, I want to toast to you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of my journey. I have been on YouTube since 2011. I have 295 videos that are currently published, 37,000 subscribers, and countless memories. I've been in the beauty industry for 10 years, and I appreciate you guys being a part of my journey, following me on Instagram, being a part of an engaging audience here on YouTube, and anything that you've ever done to support me and my business and my journey. So cheers, Merry Christmas, and let's get glamming. I don't know what a spumante is, but um, I liked this bottle of champagne because it was white. Obviously, I just bought it for aesthetic reasons. Let's start off with skin. I always start off with my um, lip balm. <laughs> this is the Laneige Lip Mask in Peppermint. I'm literally obsessed with this stuff. I think I have every flavor ever made. And this pepper one actually might be my favorite. I think you can only get it during the holiday season though. So don't be mad. And then I whipped out the gold primer today because it's a special occasion. I don't even know if I've ever used this before. Um, I'm like obsessed with Tati Westbrook and she uses all these like super glam like products, like these like really expensive primers and gold infused whatever. And she's beautiful. so. I don't know if using gold in your beauty routine actually helps anything, but this primer is infused with 24 karat gold for some reason. And I figured Christmas was a good time to use it. This product is hydrating and illuminating. I'm gonna go ahead and take it down my decollete. Any like tightening, brightening kind of product, I always try to take down the chest because I wanna be tight and bright everywhere. I'm gonna go in with my eye primer next. This is the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. This is like my favorite eye primer of all time. I don't always use it on camera, but it's like the main thing that I use on clients. I'm wearing this cute little slinky red dress, and I was actually photographed in this dress in Cancun, if y'all follow me on Instagram. I'm going to my grandma's um, annual Christmas Eve dinner tonight. And I probably won't wear this, or at least if I wear it, I'll wear like tights with it because it's too cold here in Utah to run around in a slinky little dress. I know I look amazing on top, but let me show you what I'm wearing on bottom. These are my Christmas leggings. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know who drinks this stuff. If you guys don't like, it's like, um, like Martinelli's. It's like so sweet. What I love so much about this eye primer is that it neutralizes the skin tone. 
So you'll see it has a slight coloring to it. I use the soft ochre because I like this warm tone the best, but it almost like conceals the skin and just creates the perfect canvas so that you don't have to layer on like a ton of foundation and concealer on the eyelid before you're doing your eyeshadow. That way you're not layering like a bunch of products. Moving on to foundation, this is my favorite foundation of the year. This is my 2022 favorite foundation, the Smashbox Studio Skin Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. This stuff is a dream. I love the packaging. I love the color arrangement. I love the way it wears on the skin all day long. It looks fantastic. It's the most buildable foundation, but it's just the most beautiful consistency. I absolutely love this product. It looks like a lot when I first apply it, like that looks like full coverage, but um, it buffs out super nicely and a little goes a long way. I would say it's medium to full coverage, but I could see people saying it's full coverage. The reason why I say medium to full is because if you use a beauty blender, like a beauty sponge, you're definitely gonna get more of a medium. And when you use a brush, you're gonna get full. So I'll show you in a second when I have this blended on my entire face. These earrings are gonna drive me crazy today. Can you hear them? Okay, so there's half my face and I just used a little tiny bit of product, but the finish on this is just gorgeous. It's almost matte, it's almost matte. So if you're using like a luminizing primer underneath, I think that's helpful, but um, any super long wearing product is gonna be more on the matte side, just cause in general, the more luminosity and the more hydration that a product has, the less long time it's gonna last. Think of like a liquid lipstick versus a lip gloss. Something with more hydration, more luminosity, definitely is not gonna last as long. But I'm so impressed with this product because like I said, just a little tiny bit goes a long way. And because even though it has that intense longevity, it's not super, super matte. Like if y'all use like a Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus type of product or um, back in the day that Becca Ever Matte Foundation was ins insanely, insanely matte. It's not like that. It's more of like a velvet finish. I just love the way it blends out on the skin. I love the way it feels. I love the way it looks. It's just, oh, best foundation of the year. I do take whatever's left on the brush just after I do the full face and you'll notice I kind of pat underneath the eyes and pat the eyelids. That's just for cohesiveness. <laughs> um, I don't think that it's necessary to add that coverage. I just like to have a very cohesive canvas so that everything is really um, no demarcation. Everything's the same color. But I'm not like layering on a lot of product on the eyelids when I do that. I'm just using whatever residual product is left on there and just tapping it in. Next, I'm gonna go in with my concealer and I'm gonna use a lot of concealer today. I'm gonna to be wearing this makeup for a long time, deep into the night, and I want a lot of coverage today. I don't know if you guys can tell, can hear it in my voice, but I have been fighting a cold for almost a month now. I've been so sick and I feel like I just have this like residual cold that won't go away. I thought that I got RSV just because of how much like lung damage I felt like I had or like maybe even pneumonia, but I never went to the doctor. <laughs> so I don't know what's wrong with me, but I do have this like residual kind of, it's almost raspy and sexy, like Phoebe Buffay sort of sound right now. Maybe that's why I haven't gone to the doctor because I like it. I'm just kidding, I don't like it. <laughs> I just didn't know if y'all would notice on camera. I, it always sounds worse in your own head, right? That like congestion-y thing. It always sounds worse in your own head than it does outside. Next, I'm gonna go in with my setting powder. I'm gonna use my favorite setting powder in the entire world. This is the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder. This is a freshie, so let me get it open. Isn't that so satisfying? Should I start like a makeup ASMR channel? I'm gonna put the lid back on, shake it a little bit, and then I can use the product that's in there. I hauled several of the products that I'm gonna use in today's video in my last YouTube video. Hauled? It's hauled a verb. <laughs> so you'll see a lot of the products that I mentioned in my massive Sephora haul in today's video. The next product is one that I've been dying to try out. I'm obsessed with this packaging. Oh my gosh, it's just so beautiful. But this is the Anastasia Cream Bronzer. I can't wait to try this out. I have been 
looking for a cream bronzer for months. I'm gonna start off with this small brush. I might regret that in a second. I'm just gonna go straight in. I'm starting out small because I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> the consistency is to die for. I feel like you don't need to use a small brush like this, but I am because I'm proceeding with caution since I've never used this product before. I'm not sure how pigmented it's gonna be. It's really quite pigmented actually. So I'm gonna toast the edges. I learned that term from Scott Barnes, toast the edges, like, like toast. And then lightly going to contour. Not even contour, I don't even like using that term for like real life makeup anymore. I think that people think of like Kardashian contouring and that's just like almost never what we're doing here. And honestly, the Kardashians don't even contour these days. I mean, not that there's not contouring techniques being used, but I just think people, it just, it's like a buzzword at this point. Like people aren't using that word correctly. And down the bridge of the nose. Ooh, I like this product. I'm gonna connect with my eyebrow. See how easy it is to blend a cream product. It almost like blends as you work opposed to a powder where I feel like you have to like really play with it for a long time before you're happy with the shape that you've made. I'm going back in with my foundation brush and making sure that I like the foundation part. So I'm kind of like dusting the skin where I didn't apply the bronzer. I mean, that blended so beautifully and effortlessly. I love the way that that looks. So make sure we get this hairline section really well here. I'm actually gonna take my hair down today. It's not gonna be up, so this doesn't matter that much, but for camera's sake. I remember when Kylie Jenner's makeup artist, who was it? I don't remember who it was, was doing ear contouring. <laughs> and all he was doing was like taking the bronzer and like bringing it up onto the ear so that there was no line of demarcation between the face and the ear. Cause not everybody gets like their ears spray tanned, you know? Um, and everyone was like, oh, we have to contour our ears now. And I'm like, that's not what he meant. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a little bit around my lips. That looks great. Okay, first impressions, guys. Obsessed. Love, love, love. I use the shade Amber, which um, if you need a deep bronzer, check out this line because these colors go so, so, so dark, which is amazing. Usually bronzer lines have like a light, medium, deep, and then the deep is like not a bronzer for people of color. This is the Too Faced Sun Bunny. You don't need to use a bronzer after you use a cream bronzer. You really don't, um, but I'm going to. <laughs> Sometimes we're just makeup junkies, you know, and like more is more. Can you guys hear like my earrings when I blend? Can you hear that? <laughs> it's very loud in my ears. Obviously my earrings are attached to my ears, so that makes sense. All right, time for glass number two. I swear that this <laughs> Spumante even smells different. This doesn't smell like champagne. I'm gonna keep drinking it though, because I'm not a quitter. I've been on YouTube since 2011, don't even have 50,000 subscribers. I'm obviously not a quitter, but I do have a plaque in the mail. It's coming, it'll arrive in January for five million views. Five million views, that's right. Moving on to blush. This is my favorite blush to use when I don't know what to use. This is MAC Warm Soul. I wore this on my wedding day. I'm gonna do a lot though, because it's holly and it's jolly. I always love like baked mineralized products because of the finish on the skin, but this mineralized collection from MAC is absolutely amazing. If you guys love like the satin skin like glow that I keep talking about, like you can just see here, 
like how the light is reflecting off of it, but I'm not wearing any highlighter. I'm not shimmering. There's no like glistening products on my skin. That is what mineralized products do for you. And good skincare. Good skincare also does that for you. Okay, I'm done with the face. Before I zoom you in and start working on my eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and set my skin. And this is the Stay All Night Microfine Setting Mist from e.l.f. I've been using this a lot lately. I really like it. It does remind me of high-end setting sprays. There's obviously a marble in there, so you shake it up real good. And I do like to set my face um, before I move on to my eyes because blush is the first thing to fade and I feel like my makeup is now, like my face is perfect. So I want it to stay like this. This is definitely like a special occasion situation. I'm not this like crazy on a regular basis. The continuous mist on here is really, really nice. I was really excited when I found this product because it does remind me of high-end setting sprays. All right, getting a little tipsy. Let's zoom you in. That's too much. Welcome to my face. This is very close. I did change my filming setup for this video, so please let me know, you guys, if you like this setup. Like, can you see me well? Is this good lighting? Is this good... Like, is the focus good? Give me your thoughts. Let's do my eyebrows. This is the Hourglass Arch Pencil, and I wish that this was not a 2022 favorite, but it is. I love this pencil. It is too expensive for an eyebrow pencil. I just feel like it's not worth, like, the price, but I love it. It's really good. I wish it wasn't. I'm sorry. I just finished editing my last tutorial and I felt like re-watching me do my eyebrows and like the brow version of the tutorial was the most boring thing ever. <laughs> when I was editing, I kept wanting to like cut more out and like speed up the brow process because I was like, this is so boring. Like nobody needs to watch me do my eyebrows. So I guess what I'm asking is, do you want to see this <laughs> in future videos? I feel like brows are so personalized for every person. Like every, you can't just like copy what somebody does for their brows because everybody has different eyebrows. So it can be really boring to watch because it's just not relatable. And it's really hard to talk and do this at the same time. So let me know if you guys enjoy watching me do my eyebrows. After I pencil them in, I re-fluff them, but after I shape them, um, I love going in with the Benefit Gimme Brow. This product is so good. Um, I've used this for years. I actually go in with a darker one than necessary. I think this is the darkest one. No, they have like a black one. And I use this on the front, just to the arch. So I brush up to the arch. What's nice about this brow product is it's not only tinted, but it has fibers. So it makes the hair appear thicker and fuller, which I really like having at the beginning of the brow. And I have a lot of favorite brow gels, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I could do an entire video about brow gels, but this is the NYX Control Freak, and I really, really do love this one. So this has been a favorite for a few years. I'm going to start at the front and brush up over what I just did. And then at the end, I'm gonna lightly sweep the brow down. And then I have kind of long brows, so I point them down a little bit because I don't like them to be too fuzzy. Like I like a laminated brow on some people, but I feel like it can be distracting on like a full glam look. That's just my personal opinion, so that's what I do. So this way they're like brushed up and they're full, but they're not like the focus. You see? Okay, I can't drink anymore because I'm not going to be able to like do eyes. <laughs> I just hauled this eyeshadow palette in my last video. I haven't used it yet, but I'm very excited too. It's a gorgeous color selection. Natasha Denona eyeshadows are the best. 
This is the Visart um, Natural Matte Eyeshadow Palette. This is probably my favorite eyeshadow palette in the entire universe. <laughs> um, but I need this. So I'm going to take a large flat brush and just take this white matte right here. I need that to start off this look. So I am going to start off by putting this almost all over the lid but I'm focusing it on the inner corner. I know that looks like a lot, but I promise it will blend out in a minute and then work my way up. So basically this entire section is gonna get filled with white, but the first place that you put down your brush always is gonna be the most pigmented. It's gonna have the most product because it goes straight from the pan to the face. So I start on the inner corner and diffuse outward. I want to look like the Snow Queen in the Nutcracker Ballet. You know, the Snow Queen, the one with all the rhinestones and like the white glitter? That is going to be me. Okay, now that that base is done, I'm going to switch to the Natasha Denona palette. So I just used the white from this, that's all. I'm gonna take a fluffy brush and I'm gonna go into, this is kind of weird because these colors aren't number, like named colors. They say like, like this one's called blend. <laughs> this is called Lash Line. It's like a tutorial palette, um, but I'm gonna go in with Blend and I'm just gonna tap like, I'm just gonna tap like this because that just gets the pigment on the tip of the brush. See that? I'm just going to go in the crease. Starting from the outer corner, remember, cause that's the first place that has the most pigment and work my way in. And the benefit of using a large brush for this is that it's gonna diffuse as you work because the big bristles are located, let's do some science. The big bristles are located on the outside of like the thickest part of the brush, right? So if the point part picks up the most color right here and then as you're blending it moves and then these outer bristles here start diffusing. But you have to hold your brush from the outside here. Do not hold your brush like this, it's not gonna work the same. You gotta hold it back here, and that way your wrist and your bristles can do what they're made to do. With using this warmer color on the crease section, it's going to bring more like color and life to the look since I just like whited out my whole eyelid. And it's also going to give us a great like transition blending color because blending into white eyeshadow is really hard. So you want like a more natural, almost like the color of bronzer um, to be able to buff into. Okay, so this color is really just for blending purposes. So don't overdo it. I don't want this to be a warm look. I just need that color there to allow me to blend. Now I need like a tiny version of that brush. Basically, it's still like a blending brush. It's not a pencil brush because the bristles are long. We need the long movement to allow us to like wiggle and blend on like a pencil brush which is like stiff for placement only. And I'm gonna take this color right here which is like a cooler tone. It looks super gray on camera. It's kind of like the color of my walls actually. Um, it's just a cool tone, like the coolest brown or the warmest gray, whichever way you wanna look at it. And I'm going to put this directly in the crease. The difference between what I'm doing now and what I did a second ago is that I'm not blending, I'm really just placing in the crease. Again, this type of product, this type of brush does blend a little bit as you work, but I'm not doing any like diffusing motions. I'm really just putting it in the crease. I didn't wanna take this sticker off because I didn't want the mirror to reflect too much in the camera, but I need it, so I'm gonna take it off. Oh, makeup ASMR. So again, just dipping, tap, 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 and placing. And if you look down into a mirror, it really helps you to see your placement. So what I'm doing is like looking down into the mirror. And this is a really cool tone shade, like I was saying. So it kind of gives you this like, a fact of a smoky eye without having to take the color all over your eyelid 
and I need that warm tone in there to blend. Like I was saying, that's really important. If you just go in with white and gray, this is not gonna look good. And then I just continue to build it up to the level of intensity that I like. You still see the white color and you still see that transition color up here and then the gray is in the middle. One, two, three. I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other eye. My family has always done a lot more activities on Christmas Eve than we have for Christmas. That's just kind of like historically how my family's done it. Um, my entire family goes over to my grandma's house and I have a lot of cousins. Um, there's like 40 of us and my entire family goes over to my grandma's. We have Christmas Eve dinner, we sing Christmas carols, we all gather around the piano. I have a lot of very musically talented family members. I like to sing, but I'm by no means a professional the way that my entire family is. Everyone is very, very talented, especially my grandmother who can play any song on the piano ever and expertly without like any music, like sheet music at all. It's amazing. If you're like, hey grandma, here's this song, play it. She's like, okay. Like it's crazy. Like she can hear a song one time and then she can play it for you perfectly. It's the, like, it's honestly like magic. So we all gather around the piano, sing Christmas carols. Um, everybody cries and then we open presents and then we all go home and celebrate Christmas day with our individual families. And this year, Christian and I have decided to host Christmas day so we are actually having both my extended family and his extended family over for Christmas dinner. So I'm making Christmas dinner. So everyone pray for me. I actually have gotten quite good at cooking. I started cooking during the pandemic and I've just kept up with it. So I've gotten pretty good at cooking. So I'm excited to have everybody over. My husband's an expert cocktail maker. Christian's not like actually a bartender, but best drinks you've ever had in your life are in my house, I swear. Okay, I'm going and diffusing the transition shade just to make sure that there is no harsh lines. I want this to be super, super blended. If you have to pick up a little bit more of the brown, you can, but just make sure that you don't apply too much pigment because it'll get too smoky. Unless you want to be smoky. Remember when you are blending, not to just like combine all the colors together. You still want each color to have its own placement. So stay really high with that warm tone and really low with that cool tone. Cause if you just blend it all together, then that's the same thing as if you were just like, nah, 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 nah. like you wanna make sure everything stays where it goes. This is the Makeup by Mario Master Crystal Reflector in the shade Quartz. This is so beautiful. I have really small fingers, but I feel like I need a smaller finger for this. I'm gonna start with my pinky. Makeup ASMR. See our gray here? We wanna keep the glitter below that. The tricky thing is, is that when your eye opens, it just like naturally is gonna move up there. So don't place any product up there because it's gonna work its way up anyway. Now the whitest, shimmeriest eyeshadow I could find is actually a highlighter. This is the uh, Pearl Shimmering Skin Perfector from Becca. This is, I think, discontinued. <laughs> I'm gonna pick this product up on a shader brush. and lightly top this in. I probably should have done this before the glitter, but I didn't. The last couple of years, my husband and I have started opening our presents on Christmas Eve because Christmas day just gets really crazy. Like we go over to everybody's houses. We go over to his family. We go over to my family. We start drinking. We have dinner. Like it just, the day gets away from us. 
and I really like to have that special one-on-one -on -one time with Christian to open presents and just like be in the moment with just me and him and not be like oh we have somewhere to be so hurry and wrap unwrap the next one so I've really enjoyed that because we can open presents together and then we can go to bed together and then the next day the Christmas madness begins so with that being said, I'm really excited because tonight we're opening presents. We don't always give each other presents. This year we did. I think we're going to do every other year and then do like a big vacation instead. Because it's hard to budget everything that we want to do and still give each other presents. Because we always go over budget when we buy each other gifts and... It's just challenging to, you know, make it all work out. So I think we're going to do every other year. I don't know. We'll see. Do you guys do gifts? I want to know. Tell me what you and your significant other do because it's really interesting to hear how different couples handle the, like, gift-giving season because it seems like everybody always does birthday gifts and Valentine's Day gifts, but not everybody does Christmas gifts. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, Christmas gifts is for the kids. Like, we only gift presents to kids, but I don't have kids. Now I want to do a liner. I'm going to start off with a pencil and this is a black liner. I'm going to start off with a pencil and get really tight into the lash line. I'm just using baby, baby strokes here. Sorry, I can't talk and do eyeliner at the same time. After I've done my pencil black eyeliner, I go in with a liquid and I go over top. Again, using little tiny movements. gotta finish this liquid liner before I can drink more champagne. My main bread and butter for my beauty business is bridal parties. So I make the most money off of my wedding parties and I go on location, whether it's the St. Regis Hotel or it's someone's private residence and I do a full bridal makeup service on the entire bridal party and I can't tell you how often I have bridal clients that are offering me mimosas when everyone's getting ready and I'm like girl I can't drink a mimosa right now I'm doing eyeliner like you don't want that <laughs> you don't want your makeup artist drinking mimosas I promise I'm going to be using a nude eyeliner in the lower lash line so I'm just going to fill in that waterline with the nude liner. And this makes the eye look so much more bright and awake. I'm going for like a bright classic Christmas. So I'm not doing like a super smoky look. Um, this isn't like a huge game changer, but you can see the difference that a nude liner makes here versus here. Just kind of brightens the eyes a little bit. I have two different colored eyes, so this can be kind of <laughs> difficult to see on me because the eyes are two different colors anyways, but on a traditional person, um, you'd see a bigger difference here. I was born with two different colored eyes. It's actually a form of mutation. A lot of y'all have noticed and commented and asked a lot of questions. Um, I do not wear colored contacts. I do not manipulate the color of my eyes. They are just naturally like this. God's gift, I guess. Now I'm going to curl the lashes and apply mascara. I'm using my favorite mascara. This is like a favorites video. Um, this is the Sky High Lash Sensational from Maybelline. I love this mascara. Um, this waterproof version though is like really waterproof. I love a waterproof mascara because it holds curls so much better. Um, it obviously lasts all night long and I have a big day ahead of me. I'm going to apply false lashes so I don't feel like I need like a ton of mascara on the upper lashes. Just enough to hold the curl and make them black so that they blend in. And I just feel like you can't do a holiday look without lashes. So I'm going to apply some lashes to my eyes. I love these because they wing out and like flare out a bit. 
I've learned that it's about near impossible for me to successfully apply false lashes on camera, especially while drinking champagne. So <laughs> again, very winter, very vibes. So I mix my lash adhesive because I'm high maintenance and I first apply my clear adhesive just because I like this glue better. And then I apply my black adhesive because I feel like the clear never, adhesive never dries down all the way clear. And so I just think the black looks better since I'm wearing black eyeliner today. If you're not wearing black eyeliner, then you're not gonna wanna do this. And I just mix it together on there. Then I take my little grabbers and I grab the lash like that. And oh, <laughs> almost knocked over my champagne. And I find the middle of the eye. Super important that you're gluing the lashes to your skin and not your real eyelashes. This lash band should be secured to the skin where your natural eyelashes come out. You don't want to glue the eyelash to your eyelashes because not only is that gonna be so uncomfortable, it's gonna look crazy, especially when people are looking down at you. Like if you're looking down in any photos, if you're eating your beautiful Christmas dinner and you can see that the like clumpy eyelash is just like sitting on top of your real lashes, that's super weird. You can go through and pinch the lash band and make sure that your false lash is married to your real lash, meaning they're just like meshed together really, really tightly. So you can't see the difference between where your real lash is and where your fake lash is but your actual adhesive should be attached to the skin, not the lash. I always have to go in with eyeliner afterwards and perfect it. I wish that I didn't need to do this, but I do. I didn't think I was gonna do this, but I changed my mind. I'm gonna take a little bit of this smudging brush and take that cool tone crease color. And I'm just, oh, so lightly. I'm gonna put that on the outer half of my lower lash line, just the outer half. Can you see the difference there? Just a little bit more defined than this side. It just kind of makes that white eyeliner look a little more bright. Now that I have the lashes on, I just want to define the lower lashes a little bit more so it looks a little more balanced. So finishing touches, I'm going to take a little bit more of that pearl highlighter and just pop that on the inner corner I want it to be super, super bright in there. And then I'm just gonna take um, like a fluffier brush and I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of that highlight and dust it on the very highest point of the brow bone. Not the whole thing and not to the tail really just the highest part of the arch. Cause I don't want this like stark bright white. I just want enough to tie it all together. I'm just gonna dust off the under eye, make sure there's no fallout. And I'm probably gonna do one last bit of glitter actually. Just take a little bit more for good measure, really, it's Christmas. All right, the hardest part of this tutorial, the lips. I'm gonna do a red lip.
This is the Urban Decay Vice Liquid Lipstick. This is supposed to be a glossy, long-wearing vinyl lip. So that means it's not supposed to crack, it's not supposed to break, it's supposed to last all night long, and it has like a glossy vinyl finish to it. All of the commercials and all of the rules say you gotta mix this really, really good. So I make sure we're mixed really good here because I don't want any errors. So the final lip definitely has like a sheen to it. It's not flat matte, but I wouldn't call it glossy. I feel like it's kind of ideal because you want it sheen enough that it looks like a little juicy, unlike like our traditional liquid lipstick, like matte lips that look like the sole is being sucked out of them. This kind of has more of like a sheen, but I wouldn't call it a gloss. And honestly, red lips are already hard enough to apply. I wouldn't say this formula was difficult, but it does feather a little bit, which is interesting. It's not like, like our traditional red liquid lipsticks where you put them in place and they stay. I feel like this did feather a little bit. So I don't know, I might go in with this with a brush. I was just walking around my house and I looked in other lighting and I actually really, really love the way the lip looks up close on camera where you're like really paying attention and dissecting every aspect, it's maybe not perfect. So if you wanted to make it perfect because you're a crazy person like I am, you can go get yourself a little detailer brush and a liquid lipstick. <laughs> but I would think that the average person doesn't need to do this. I think this is like, you know, a little crazy. And even though I say it's crazy, I think that looks so much better. So, I mean, I don't know. You can be as crazy as you want. If you were doing like a photo shoot or your wedding day maybe, this would be necessary. For me, Christmas. This is the type of care that I take with all of my clients. As a professional makeup artist, this is what my clients expect when they sit in my chair. And so when I actually take the time to do my own makeup, I kind of have this exact same expectation for myself. I am not going to be putting this lipstick to the test on my glass because it's just not worth it to me. So I got a glass straw because I'm fancy. As chic as this hair up situation is, I am gonna go ahead and do my hair. All right, my friends, this is the completed look. We've reached the end of the video. Okay, so the real test. Very minimal lipstick on there, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining me on this Christmas Eve day. I had so much fun getting ready with y'all. I will make sure I leave all the details in the description box below. We talked about a lot of stuff today. I used a lot of good products and I know you guys are gonna wanna know exactly what I did. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm surprised that this is the video that brought you here. <laughs> but Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, welcome. I'm Madison K. I would love if you please subscribe to my channel before you leave. And I will see you guys next year. Mm -hmm.